Hey there guys, so I want to thank you for joining today's live stream as always. So for today, as far as, um, you know, things to talk about before we get started. So as always, I do really want to mention my website. It's bponlinefitness.com. I've got it here at the bottom of the screen. So it's easy to get to. You just type that in and it'll take you straight to the website. So what I want to mention on my website is I do have a ton of free resources that you can access. So on my website, you can check out the free fitness blog. I usually post that weekly. Um, you can see that. You can also see ways to sign up for my email newsletter, which is as you scroll down to the bottom, you can sign up for the email newsletter. And if you do you know, want to learn a little bit more, you can also schedule your consultation as well. So just sort of keep that in mind. Um, there's a lot of different resources in there that you can check out. Um, but if you do have any questions about anything, feel free to reach out. But I just wanted to mention my website because I do really, you know, want to share that because I have put a lot of effort in building that and just a way for, you know, you others you know, everybody to have a resource that they can look at as it relates to fitness and nutrition. So let's go ahead and get started with what we're talking about today. So in today's topic, we're going to talk about the, basically the science of habit formation. And when it comes to the science of habit formation, this has not really been a topic that I've discussed here lately, or it's not been a topic I've discussed in any other live stream. So this is somewhat new, and I've been trying to, you know, come up with, you know, something that's very unique, but also is very informative in a way that you can really grasp and that gives you something that you can take with you. You know, no matter if we're talking about, you know, fitness, nutrition, habits, anything of that sort. Um, so I feel like this is a very important topic to keep in mind, especially when you're focusing on a fitness goal. So... When it comes to habits, this is a very big part of any sort of routine that you have, um, any sort of anything that, you know, you are trying to sort of work towards to be better at. You do have habits that you have to work around. So habits are automatic, often subconscious behaviors that we repeat regularly in response to certain cues or triggers. These behaviors become ingrained over time through repetition and reinforcement. In the context of fit, it, fitness, habits play a crucial role in establishing and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. So the habit loop. So this is one of the topics that I mentioned um, in my post. And basically what the habit loop is, is a cycle process, the cue triggers, the routine, which leads to the reward, which in turn reinforces the habit loop. So this is basically just a basically a pattern a cycle that you go through when it comes to sort of developing a habit so over time as the loop is repeated the habit becomes more ingrained and automatic requiring less conscious effort to initiate and one of the reasons why i'm talking about this topic in particular is because that when it comes to sort of building a habit, especially when it comes to fitness or if you're, you know, focusing on nutrition or anything of that sort, you do need to have, you know, a proper structure, um, a way to sort of build upon that habit. So the first thing is, is cues. So the cue is the trigger or trigger or the signal that prompts the habit to begin. Cues can take various forms, including environmental triggers, emotional states, time of day, or specific actions. So these are basically the first thing that is pretty much initiating the, you know, to take the action, basically. The routine, of course, is the actual behavior. So what you do, your, your normal habit that you're doing daily is the routine. So the routine is the actual behavior or action that is performed in response to the cue. This is the habit itself, the repeated behavior that has become automatic over time. And then the reward is basically what you get for completing that habit or that, you know, that routine basically. So the routine is the actual behavior or the action that is performed in response to the cue. This is the habit itself, the repeated behavior that has become automatic over time. So this is basically how you develop 
a habit. And this can be related to, you know, any sort of specific, you know, habit that you're wanting to build, whether it be fitness, whether it be nutrition, you're basically, you know, being aware of these cues and performing these, you know, specific routines and then having rewards from that habit loop as you've consistently done your routine. So identifying cues and triggers. So how do we identify those? So the first thing you need to do is start by keeping a journal to track your habits. This is a great thing to do. Each time you engage in the habit, you want to understand, take note of the circumstances surrounding it, pay attention to reoccurring patterns or sequences of events that precede the habit. For example, you might notice that you always feel the urge to snack while watching TV in the evening or that you consistently reach for your phone first thing in the morning. So we're identifying, you know, anything that's bad, um, any sort of habits that we can sort of identify in our routine. This can go same hand in hand when it comes to good habits and when it comes to bad habits. Um, so what you want to do, especially when it comes to sort of breaking those bad habits, is being able to identify those. Um, keep track of what you do day to day. It could be small habits, um, like for example, a big, you know, objection that kind of comes to mind, especially when I'm talking to any potential client, um, is basically not having enough time. So for anybody, there is enough time. We all have enough time. It's just how we structure our time. You have plenty of time to exercise. You just have to learn how to structure your time. You have to eliminate the habits that you're doing in your routine that are just not you know beneficial to your goal anything that is like a time waster you just need to work on you know getting that out of your routine and that's what it takes so the best way to do that is to sort of keep track of those things that you're doing daily um paying, paying attention to those reoccurring patterns sequences anything like that is a way for you to identify sort of those cues and triggers so designing a routine. Designing a routine involves several steps to ensure it aligns with your goals, preferences, and lifestyle. Whether you are creating a workout routine, a daily schedule, or a habit building plan, here's a general framework to guide you through the process. So you want to start by clarifying your objectives. What do you want to achieve with this routine, whether it's improving fitness, increasing productivity, or developing healthier habits? Having clear goals will inform the structure and content of your routine. This is something that I always mention, especially for anybody that I talk to um, that's interested in online coaching, is defining your goal. Um, it's the most important thing that you need to really, really to start with any sort of, you know, workout routine is to define exactly what you're pursuing. Why is this important to you? Why, you know, is this important now? Um, what's been preventing you from reaching this specific goal. Um, so identifying that is really important to really reaching that goal. So keep that in mind. So evaluate your current lifestyle. Again, this sort of goes back to what I just discussed, you know, as it relates to cues and trigger, triggers, basically. So evaluate your current lifestyle habits and commitments. Consider factors such as work or school. Schedule, family, responsibilities, social activities, and personal preferences. Understanding your constraints or priorities will help you design a realistic and sustainable routine. And that's another thing, too, that you need to keep in mind. When it comes to, you know, a getting adjusted to a workout routine, you need to be able to basically, you know, work around your schedule. You need to be aware of your schedule, first and foremost, as you're getting into a workout routine, find a time that works for you where you can efficiently, you know, complete your workout and be prepared for times where, you know, you know, your routine kind of gets off track. Um, be prepared for those because those moments will happen. And really one thing I always mention with clients, especially when they're going through times where there's a lot of stuff going on, they're having a difficult time. The best thing to do is, even if you fall off, it's not really falling off. It's about getting back up. So getting back into your routine is more important than, you know, you know, not starting again. Not starting again is the worst thing you do, but 
if you can get back up from that, the, that setback, that's what matters most. So that's what I always try to mention to clients. Even if you do kind of fall off for a brief period, that's fine. All you need to do is get back up. That's all, you know, that's all you need to focus on mostly. But just what I'm trying to say here is be prepared. Be, you know, be clear about your objective, what you're trying to accomplish, but also evaluate your current lifestyle so that in reaching your goal that you are prepared for any setbacks in your life that may happen, you know, as you're trying to reach your goal, basically. So that's something that you need to keep in mind when you're, you know, designing and following a routine. So factors that influence habit formation. So repetition is fundamental to habit formation. The more often a behavior is performed in a consistent context, the more likely it is to become a habit. Consistency helps reinforce the neural pathways associated with the behavior, making it more automatic over time. The anticipation of a reward is a powerful motivator for habit formation. When we experience positive outcomes or feelings as a result of a behavior, our brains relief release neurotransmitters like dopamine reinforcing the habit loop so rewards can be intrinsic which is internal or extrinsic which is external rewards like praise or you know earning a reward anything of that sort is external and i sort of talked a little bit about internal and ex or excuse me intrinsic and extrinsic motivation so intrinsic is more of the satisfaction you get within Whereas extrinsic is more of the, you know, outward rewards that's received to you, you know, in, in the real world, I guess you could say. So that's basically the difference between those. But one thing that's going to be really helpful to, you know, really building a habit is that anticipation of that reward. Knowing that you're going to get a reward from that specific habit. The more that you, you know, focus on that outcome that you're going to get from that habit, that's going to help you, you know, consistently show up for it. And it's going to just build that consistency over time. So just, you know, really focus when you're, you know, working towards a goal and you're trying to build a habit, you know, whether you're like trying to gain more muscle or lose weight or anything of that sort, Think about the reward, sort of visualize what you're trying to, you know, achieve and use that as a motivating factor each time you're doing a workout, each time you're trying to, you know, better your nutrition. Keep those sort of things in mind. A lot of it has to do with mindset. And that's something I mention all the time with clients is you have to change your mindset on a lot of things in order to reach your goal. The more you, you know, focus on you know, your outcome, the more you're going to get to that goal because you really want to receive that reward. So just keep that in mind when it comes to habits. So habit formation strategies. Habit formation strategies are, of course, techniques and approaches aimed at establishing new habits or modifying existing ones. These strategies leverage principles from psychology, neuroscience, and behavioral science to facilitate behavior change. So what you want to do is begin by breaking down the desired habit into small manageable actions. Starting with tiny setups makes the behavioral change less intimidating and increases the likelihood of success. So for example, if your goal is to exercise regularly, start with a five minute walk each day. Very simple. You, I've mentioned this before, when, you try to, when you're trying to build something, um, you know, it's brick by brick. You've got to really start small. Um, if you really want to increase, like if you're trying to reach a, you know, personal best in a workout or anything of that sort, the best thing to do is to just start small. Get adjusted to that smaller weight. Learn how to master that smaller weight. And then as you're ready, you know, take the next step and gradually increase that weight, you know, that's something that I always mention a lot of times with clients when it comes to progressive overload. It's not so much about lifting heavy. It's more about being able to control the form, you know, and I know we're not necessarily talking about weightlifting itself today, but 
I'm just trying to give you an example of, you know, you really need to start small. With anything you're starting, you know, if you're trying to build a habit, specifically if it's weightlifting, don't try to, you know, get an ego and try to think that you can lift this much. Start with the smallest, you know, weights. That's completely fine. Learn how to master form and then go from there, you know, and build that habit. Um, but just break down, you know, your desired habit in the small manageable actions. Start small you know, in progression there. So there's something else that I mentioned very often is using SMART goals. The SMART criteria, which is basically, you know, an acronym, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, or time bound to set clear and realist, realistic goals for habit formation. This provides clarity and accountability, helping you to stay focused and track progress effectively. So basically you want your goal to be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and timely or time bound so you want to have your goal and you know building your habit based around that you know that set of ideas so application to personal development so habits are powerful tools for achieving long-term goals by breaking down larger objectives into smaller smaller manageable actions and turning them into habitual behaviors and individuals can make progress consistently over time, for example, someone aiming to improve their physical fitness might develop habits such as exercising for 30 minutes each morning or meal prepping healthy lunches for the week. Developing productive habits can help individuals manage their time more effectively and accomplish tasks efficiently by establishing routines and rituals around work, study, or household chores. People can optimize their daily schedules and reduce progress procrastination, habits such as setting specific work hours using time blocking techniques and prioritizing tasks can enhance productivity and focus. So, you know, time blocking is something that I, I basically do myself, especially with my business, in order to, you know, know that I need to get this task completed by this time in order to stay productive and to get things done. That's another thing to keep in mind is to be efficient with your time. Um, it's, it takes time again to build these habits, but when you do, it just becomes second nature and you just have this routine that works. So how do you break old habits? I talked a lot about good habits. I mentioned a little bit about bad, but how exactly do you break old habits? So rather than simply trying to eliminate the old habit, focus on replacing it with a new healthier behavior. This is something that I mention all the time to clients when it comes to, you know, if you're not eating healthy or, you know, you're not showing up to workouts, just start small. You don't, you know, slowly replace that unhealthy habit with something that is healthier, basically. Choose a substitute behavior that fulfills the same need to de or desire, but aligns with your goals and values. For example, if you are trying to quit smoking, you might replace the habit of smoking with chewing gum or taking deep breaths when you feel the urge to smoke. Again, you know, when it comes to smoking, I know that's, with that example, it's really hard to, you know, clearly use that because, you know, when you've built that habit, that habit can be hard to break. So there may be other factors to keep in mind for, you know, something of that nature. Um, but that can go with any sort of habit that you're trying to break as well. So modify your environment to reduce exposure to triggers associated with old habit. This might involve rearranging your living or workspace, removing tempting stimuli, or avoiding situations where the habit is likely to occur. Creating a supportive environment can make it easier to break old habits and establish new ones. Again, basically the name of the game here is to slowly replace that new habit, or excuse me, slowly replace that old habit with a new and healthier habit, again, you just want to substitute it until it becomes, you know, part of your, your, you know, a more healthier habit than your old habit. And then another thing you want to do is modify your environment, you know, have your environment sort of match your, your intended goal. Like you don't have anything that could, you know, sort of remind you of that specific old habit that you have. Um, 
you know, rearranging your environment, anything of that sort is a great way to avoid that. Alrighty, guys. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that you found this helpful and valuable. I wanted to, of course, again, try to discuss something a little bit new, something a little bit unique that you may not have really heard about or that makes you think about your habits in general. Again, this can be applied to, you know, anything really in life um, when it comes to, you know, if you're trying to reach a fitness goal, if you're trying to, you know, eat healthier, maybe you're trying to drink more water and trying to build that habit. There's so many things that come with, you know, building a habit. And this is something that I've sort of been learning myself because there has been a book that I've been reading that has really helped me really, um, you know, go basically how to break old habits. Um, and it's something that I've really wanted to go into detail with. And I believe that it is really good, you know, you know, connection to fitness because with fitness, it is something that you have to build up to. It's something you have to, you know, really get into the routine of doing. And it takes time for a lot of different people. A lot of people have to really hard time, you know, building that habit of fitness. But, you know, and just building a healthier lifestyle, it takes time to really do that when you've been so adjusted to your current lifestyle. It's just, it's a lot to really adjust to, you know, making that change. And that's why I wanted to sort of discuss this in general, you know, to give you an idea of what factors you can take into consideration when you're trying to change your habit and, you know, build more healthier habits in your life. So again, guys, that's all I have for you today. If you do want more information about online coaching, you can visit my website, bponlinefitness.com. Again, there's a ton of resources on there, free resources you can check out. I do have the latest live stream I usually post on the homepage. This one will be posted on there very soon. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on here on Facebook. Or, of course, you can send me an email. My email is brandonparton95 at gmail.com. You can also send me a message, of course, on here as well. Um, anyway, it's totally fine for you to reach out, but thank you guys again. As always, there will be another live stream next Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, so be sure to check that out. With that um, live stream, I'm going to be talking a little bit about, you know, accessory workouts and how they relate to strength gains, so we're going to be going, you know, back into more of the fitness aspect of things in that live stream, so Feel free to check that out, but I will see you guys again, of course, in the next live stream. So thank you guys.